This is the High School Crossfire. Welcome back. Thank you, panel of judges. I'm Nankunda Dizia and I'm the fourth negator. I would, on basing on the grounds of a resolution that states that this house shall rely on tax revenue as the main avenue to run Uganda's economy, I would love to ask our farmers the following questions. First, according to the various researches and study, is agriculture the backbone of Uganda's economy? No. How, how disappointing. Please go make further research. According to research, is tax evasion currently in Uganda? Yes. Thank you. Interesting. Do you believe that a major source of income should not suffocate other sources? Yes. Oh, God. As a country, would you rely on a source of income or of revenue that depends on other sectors? It really depends. Okay. Would you rather take a little scoop of the sauce than take the whole bowl of meat? It depends on what I want. If I want the whole sauce, I take it. If I want a half, I take it. Okay. <laughs> are agro-based industries sources of taxes? They are. Thank you. As a citizen, would you pay taxes when you do not have a stable source of income? You don't. Oh, that's very interesting, our dear judges. Note that. Did you say that you are going to create tax exemptions for people who are poor and tax people according to their status? Yes. As their I financial do. status? Yes. Very good. My last question. Are you aware that by depending on taxes, you're straining the economy? No. Thank you. You can have your seat, please. So our dear judges, clearly these farmers are so greedy. They come as team government, but they are not looking at the poor person, the lowest person in the economy. We come here and tell them that currently the statistics show, according to the Bureau, National Bureau of Statistics, that 70% of the population is employed in agriculture and it contributes 24.1% of the GDP. It means agriculture already contributes a lot to the economy of the country. And we are telling them if we develop it, we shall be able to improve our economy more. And then we ask them, do you believe that tax evasion currently is in Uganda, and they say no, clearly they are not informed that there is tax evasion in Uganda. So if taxes are being evaded, it means we cannot rely on them. And then that brings me to the next question where I asked them that would you rely on a source of revenue that depends on other sectors? Clearly tax revenue depends on other sectors. It means if these other sectors are weak, then we shall have less revenue. So how can we rely on a sector that it itself is unreliable, itself, it only depends on other sectors? This is, means that the tax is unreliable. And then we ask them that would you rather take a little scoop of the soup or take the whole bowl of meat? They don't give us a clear answer. We are looking at tax as the little scoop of soup, but we are looking at concentrating and on agriculture as our main source of revenue as taking the whole bowl of meat because agriculture is dependent it is independent and it's reliable because most people have embraced it people have are comfortable with it and people can depend on it then we ask them do you say that you are going to create tax exemptions for people who are poor and people and tax people according to their financial status, they tell us that yes. So if you're relying on a sector and then you're providing tax exemptions, you're, you're taxing people according to their income status and we are looking at most of the people in Uganda are still under, uh, they're still having unstable sources of income. It means you cannot rely on this. So we are trying to prove to them that their tax, the, tax is unreliable, it is not acceptable in the community and it's not effective while our agriculture is. And I stand to believe that tonight, I mean today, we the negators take this case because we have proven our case. Thank you. Did the, did the first speaker say that Uganda should rely on agriculture? Yes, she did. Do you believe that the country can survive without taxes? It depends. Did you understand the resolution? We did fully. Do you believe that agriculture does not rely on, on taxation? It is tax that relies on agriculture, not the reverse. Can you get money from agriculture importation if not for taxes? Yes, you can. 
Did you say taxation is not acceptable by the people? It is not fully acceptable. Okay, then who makes the laws, the people or the parliament? The parliament makes the laws for the betterment of the people. Thank you so much, you can take your seat. Panom, we expected these people to pay, in, to, to pay in attention to what we are telling them. They, they have asked me a question that is agriculture the backbone of the country and I said no. For reason being, a backbone that cannot sustain us cannot really be a backbone. And these people are asking us about corruption, that the office of the IGG has been there and it has not really helped in any case. As the uh, farmers, we are here to tell you today that we are going to really do this by cooperating and the thorough research. These people have told us that Uganda is really in luck and we cannot make a time, a time frame of eight years. But that is very okay, because you cannot wake up from anywhere and do something that is out of nowhere, so the, our time frame is okay. So now, I asked, this pass, I asked the fourth negator if the first speaker told us that Uganda should depend on agricultural products, forgetting that agricultural products are also taxed. For that matter, therefore, I don't think Uganda should rely on agriculture. We ask them if they really believe that the country can survive without taxes. I don't think the country can really survive without taxes. As the farmers today tell you that the country cannot survive without taxes because most of the things we have in Uganda have been done by the government and through the taxes we pay now. We ask them if the country we asked them if they really understood the resolution and they said yes. Yet we expected these people to come and tell us how they are going to use this agriculture to really, uh, uh, to really improve the uh, economy of Uganda. But then they, what they came and told us is that agriculture, that people are really relying on agriculture and they are comfortable with it. People are really not conversant with agriculture only because they don't have any other thing to do. They don't have any other way to go. That is why they have really relied on agriculture. And these people, I, I also ask them who makes the laws, the people or the parliament. So if the parliament really passes the, laws, the law and it says people should be taxed according to the money they get or, the, uh, or according to the amount of money they get from the work they do. So now... We talked about equitable taxation. You people, you did not really understand us. Equity, it means that if you really can get more amount of money, you are going to pay more taxes. But these people really came here and told us that it is going to really strain the economy. It is not going to strain the economy if the people are, are paying the taxes that are within their expectations. Now, Panom. We really believe that we are taking tonight's debate because taxation should really be concentrated on. The only reason why taxation may not be, may, may not be the backbone now is only because we have not concentrated on it. So we call out everyone that we go on our side and be on the side of, of taxation. Thank you so much. I rest my case. Personally, before I begin, I would like to congratulate you all. Once again, the bar is raised higher and higher. This round has been a round that was like a seesaw. After the first speech, I thought I had had it all. Team Affirmative would take the day. And then Team Negative came after the first speech, and I'm like, oh, it now gets interesting. Every after a speaker, there was something new, something informative, something good. Now... This was a debate that was decided based off one, content and strategy. For style, I gave both of you 17. However, when Negator 3 came to stage to weigh up the debate, she helped me look at the clash points of the debate. One of the clash points was agriculture and its rate of acceptability, reliability, and comfortability among the masses of the Ugandan population contrasted with its shortfalls highlighted by team affirmative which include climate pitfalls and price fluctuations now team affirmative sold to us the case and told us in spite of what we do to agriculture it is always dependent on climate in spite of what we do to agriculture on the global market we still suffer from agricultural price fluctuations now if team negative had come 
and revolutionized their strategy and said, we can take overbearing investment into agriculture outside of the civil society scheme, even into the government scheme, to overcome some of the pitfalls in the climate change. As for agricultural price fluctuations, you could engage in a common market system, but you could not say that because that would now mean a mandate that is owed by government to engage in joint ventures, to engage in creation of a common market for better bargaining power on the global market. I feel they want that essential clash point. Yeah, thank you so much. I want to begin by appreciating both teams for putting up such a good debate and quality submissions. Credit and appreciation to a farmer one, a farmer three, negator one, negator three, negator four. Not that all the rest are bad, but just special credit to those they were really able to establish and fulfill their obligations as they are meant to, as their speakers given their speaker roles and speaker positions. Ladies and gentlemen, personally, I based my submission and I based my judgment in this debate basing on the crash points and the qualitative points that were given by both teams. First and foremost, team affirmative talked, uh, I'll begin with team negative. Team negative brought an alternative of basing on agriculture as the main avenue of the tax base. Which point or which alternative at a certain point of time was squashed or responded to by Team Affirmative when they came and asked, yes, you are talking of relying on agriculture, but what about the shortcomings that the agricultural industry comes with? What about issues to do with technological, marketable, mechanical fluctuation or inconsistencies that come along? But still, I appreciate the negative by virtue that they were able to come that given their work plan, they talked about the improvement in technology, machinery, irrigation which was answered. Now, going to the points that were given by Team Affirmative. Team Affirmative came and they talked about the progressive and equitable taxation. Which Team Negative came and said, actually the equitable and progressive taxation based or structure is already present, given the issue of pay as you earn. And then they went ahead to ask, okay, even if it is going to be progressive, what will you tax a person that does not have a source of income? Meaning, as you are saying you are going to increase taxes or you are going to depend on the taxation base, have you been able to provide to the citizens the source of income? Because it is according to their income that you are going to tax. Yes, I like the fact that you talked about the industrial or the carbon tax. But now, in your work plan, have you been able to provide the industries that are going to provide employment? Because for them, as they were advocating for agriculture, they said with development of agriculture, it is going to lead to increase in the employment, which is going to lead to increase in production, which is going to lead to increase in the taxation base or the government revenue. Okay. So, I want to start by pointing out something in this resolution that I felt both teams actually either missed out or did not appreciate enough. Now, Dear debaters, judges, and August House, you will agree with me that taxes or tax revenue is not a sector on its own. Are we together? That is why you realize that you came to a point in argument where you're asking them, so now let us say we fully go full throttle into agriculture. How does the government get money out of the agriculture in order to run the economy. Are we together? Even though the whole of Uganda was carrying out agriculture and we were exporting to the very best of markets and earning from it, the government cannot come and just pick the money off of the citizens. Are we together? Are we together? So, when you examine the resolution on its own, Personally, I felt it is more a question of funding than merely just bettering the economy. What are the other options? Where else can a government get funds? They could borrow internally. They could borrow externally. They could get grants, donations. Worst case scenario, they could print more. However, that would devalue the currency. Are we together? Those are some of the alternatives that would have combated the revenue. Are we together? Now, 
I also noted that Team Affirmative did not spot that altogether. So for that reason alone, I cannot penalize the negatives. Much as I feel their alternative, which they actually built on well, was not equivocal to tax revenue in the line of what they actually are. Because the agriculture on its own cannot directly fund the economy unless the government has a way of getting the money off the agriculture altogether. So that is just something I wanted both of you to note altogether. That is why you realize, Team Affirmative, you kept on raising the question of now, how shall we get the question, the money out of agriculture? That conjunction was because the other is not a sector. As a matter of fact, every sector in Uganda is actually taxed. You get the point? So now, considering the fact that Team Affirmative did not point that out, now I have to judge this on the merit of what you presented. Now, your cases. Team Affirmative, I felt you built a good case. However, I felt the questions that you left standing were more damaging to your case than the damage you actually did to the case of the negatives. Because you cannot leave out a point such as tax evasion. So if you're basing on the taxes, how are you going to make that tax system more efficient? Do not just tell us about the issue of adding extra taxes. Address the issue of tax evasion. They are telling you there is a huge informal sector that is not taxed. You get what I'm saying? So how are you going to address that? They point out for you the inability of so many people in Uganda to actually pay the tax. Now, I'm going to go straight to where I drew my line. Now, team, before I do that, team negative. First of all, your house, you're trying to implement the country depending on agriculture, and somehow your house is a private body. That does not connect. You get that. But however, Team Affirmative did not do what? Did not point that out. You did not rebut their house, yet they came up and actually rebutted your house and you defended it. But their house was a private body and they're trying to do what? To be activists of something that should be carried out by an entire country. How will that private body be able to do what? To implement what you're saying. So next time you don't do that. Now the other thing is uh, tax evasion, team affirmative. You're trying to tell the entire country to depend on taxation and there is a problem of tax evasion and somehow you have not rebutted that. Personally, I found your work plan very, very beautiful. Your entire strategy was nice, but the mere fact that you failed to answer the questions that Team Negative asked you on tax evasion, on corruption, on overtaxation, all you had to do was to refer them to your work plan, because your work plan actually had answers to those, but you did not do that. Then the other thing that I based my, ad, my judgment on is I cannot compare 24% GDP to 12% GDP, 13% GDP. All you had to do was to refer them back to your work plan. You're already introducing new taxes. You're already going to improve the tax sector. That means in that alone, the tax base is going to do what? To increase. Where I based all my arguments is about the GDP. To a layman's language, let's just make it clear. Somebody's having a 24.1% and a 70% of the population. Another one is having a 13.1%. The way me I understand taxation, trust me, I'll fall for the 24%. I beg to be corrected. Two, the fourth speaker of the affirmative side, you mentioned about equity. And you mentioned about the IGG. The Marxism of law is that he who comes to equity comes with clean hands. Now, what do I mean he who comes to equity comes with clean hands? You have an office that has been pinpoint as an office that is regulating and bringing up corruption. That is the IGG's office. 
when you mentioned IgG as one of your sticker points that they come maybe to fight corruption, already I saw the Marxism of equity lending in to the negative side. Because already we know that the IgG as the point we are standing. They are the champions of corruption. I'm sorry to say this. Now, if Agricata is employing 70% of the people, and we will need taxation to these people where the affirmative, I love how you say that every person is going to be taxed as how he is earning. 75% of Ugandans don't have jobs. 14 million of youths don't have jobs. The question is, what are you taxing them when they don't have a job? Two, the negators came and said, however much we are depending on the agriculture, there is agro-tourism, there is multi-purpose kind of a thing, technology, we can bring it onto. You brought the issue of climate change, that what affects, which I love that issue, through your third speaker, that what happens to the agriculture sector when now the climate change comes. The magician of the game today, I give it to the third negator. She has really played a role which I loved most. All of you were good, but the magician of the game today was the third negator. Where she came and said, the climate change we shall improvise other means already. The last coffin in the grave on the coffin was the last nail on the coffin was hidden. Now, I was more persuaded with all your strategy. But at the end of the day, I cannot choose a 13.1% over a 24%. I beg to submit. Thank you. These are the marks. I gave team uh, affirmative a 64%. Most people don't earn a 64 from me. You're the first ones. And I gave team negators a 68%. Now, in totality, it's a 63.4% for team affirmative and a 68% for team negators. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a unanimous judgment from all the five judges that team negators take the day.